Deep Rock Galactic's overclock system provides an incredible amount of customization to the player. Between cleans, balanced, and unstable overclocks, each player can tweak or overhaul their weapon to fit their individual playstyle. Typically, these changes are more than worthwhile. Take, for example, Neurotoxin Payload, which takes a pretty mediocre weapon and turns it into a game-breaking, pub rooting machine. On the other hand, there are a few that are arguably worse than no overclock at all. I'm not talking about stuff like Spinning Death for the Breach Cutter, which grants the gun a new, vastly different, and probably worse need. I'm talking overclocks that are significant downgrades in almost all situations. We'll start with my least controversial picks and move into thumbnail territory as we go on. I think everybody knows this overclock is pretty trash. Even at a first glance, it should be obvious Microflechettes provides little to no real value. Doubled ammo, that's pretty cool. Then it halves your damage, and all of a sudden, all you have is a weapon that has half damage output with little to no return on investment. Even other decidedly mediocre ammo overclocks at least increase your gold damage, which, despite being a pretty meaningless metric, is one that Microflechettes can't even claim a victory in. Defenders of this overclock might point towards its ability to put out tons of stun with tier 5a, but if you take that mod you lose out on even more DPS, and with other overclocks, or indeed no overclock at all, you could have done something even better than stunning their enemy, actually killing them. In every metric Microflechettes fails. It has awful DPS for the Burt, lower total damage than literally nothing, and offers sustain in the secondary slot of Gunner of all classes. Just don't. This one's far less clear-cut, but I think still generally agreed upon. Minishells does have quite a bit more total damage than other options, with a far more forgiving damage penalty. It even has theoretically comparable sustained DPS to other options, given its larger mag size. Unlike Microflechettes, though, Minishells sacrifices the Warthog's stun entirely. This makes the weapon significantly worse against a variety of targets. All of a sudden, Slashers, Menaces, Guards, Praetorians, and many more enemies have that bit more pushing power often forcing you to switch to your secondary, burn a dash, or just straight up eat the hit. As a result, despite the somewhat comparable pure sustained DPS output of mini shells, it has a much, much worse time to disable. And taking this overclock means Engineer gives up even more self-defense power on the class with the least of it already. Additionally, you end up missing one and two shot front break prints much more often, meaning in practice mini shells total damage isn't even all it's chalked up to be. Another common argument I see in favor of mini shells is that it's good for turret whip, but that's not really true, given turret whip's limiting factor is almost never turret ammo. From a purely mathematical standpoint, you can get 103 turret shots out of a typical Gemini setup, but in practice, because of your turret uptime and the whip cooldown, you end up whipping at most 10 or 20 times during a swarm, which is an honestly negligible ammo cost, even for the least ammo efficient Warthog builds. Mini shells isn't truly awful, but it's hard to say it's better than nothing. We'll ride the extra ammo train for a bit longer. Heat pipe is another similar case. It grants some extra ammo efficiency for your charge shots and a bit more charge speed, but overheats so impractically fast that it's really difficult to chain shots together. There's not really much interesting to say here. Heat pipe just sort of gimps your combat effectiveness in exchange for a bit of extra ammo that shouldn't be even necessary given how hard it is to take advantage of it with this overclock. On the other hand, this overclock has more or less no relevant use cases. Overcharger is at a pretty rough spot. A lot of this is due to thin containment field being by and far away the best option for more or less every experimental plasma charger build, and the fact that thin containment field is its own entity that doesn't interact with charge shot damage or AoE. So if your goal is to use TCF, Overcharger is nothing but an ammo and cooling down. Now we're pigeonholed into just burning nightmare builds. Let's not talk about Plasma Slush. With Burning Nightmare, Overcharger is okay, I guess. You lose 20% of your ammo pool in exchange for slightly beefier charge shots that hit some entirely meaningless breakpoints. The fact that we even have to devolve into Burning Nightmare Cope at all should show just how bad Overcharger is, though even in comparison to a basic Overclockless TCF build. And don't even get me started on how Overcharger compares to Heavy Hitter. This overclock is really, really weird. The Cryo Cannon is, at its core, largely just a vessel for its tier 5 mod, Cold Radiance. At base, nearly half of your single target freezing power in close quarters comes from Radiance's huge 60 cold per second circular AoE, which turns out to be a bit over 40% of your freezing power even if you take both cold mods and flow rate. 
flow rate expansion turns that into just shy of 40%, while simultaneously making it much more difficult to actually take advantage of cold radiance, which benefits from continuous fire as it activates in 1 second intervals. This equation turns out even more ugly when you consider that it's only single target freezing power. In practice, Cold Radiance actually ends up being far more important than the stream itself against most enemies, as it covers everything around you rather than just a small portion of your vision. As a result, flow rate up is a functional downside. You end up spending more ammo per Cold Radiance activation. Flow rate expansion, as a result, ends up kimping your survivability and general freezing power in exchange for its quote-unquote upside. The fundamental premise behind the overclock is flawed in the first place. Cryo Canyon doesn't struggle with uptime at all, especially with Tier 1A, and any rather questionable benefit from the bursty cryo research this overclock provides is far outweighed by its negative impact on Cold Radiance. Now that I've hopefully convinced you of Cold Radiance's importance, I'll present you a bit of a harder pill to swallow. Tuned Cooler is actively bad because it does nothing to benefit Cold Radiance. The additional cold is nice, sure, but its ability to get you to the vaunted 10 cold breakpoint more easily, which isn't even very important anyways due to sticky ice and cold radiance, and additional flow rate are, at best, very minimal quality of life, and at worst, just actively bad. Hitting that breakpoint with Toon Cooler in the first place still requires you to give up the powerful tier 1 mods or the huge tier 4 ammo boost. So I find builds with Toon Cooler are, on average, worse because players want to play to the overclock's supposed strengths. And we haven't even gone to the tuned cooler era of perfectly tuned cooler. The extra charge up time and huge decrease in pressure gain are certainly more than enough to counterbalance tuned cooler's benefits, if there were any in the first place. This overclock has always been overrated and probably just straight up worse than nothing. Another overrated trailer overclock, saying face melter is bad isn't a very really hot take at all, despite this overclock's propensity for heat. That being said, I've put this here because some people seem to really like it even though the vast majority of players who play Hazard 5 or above regularly will tell you of its worthlessness. Interestingly enough, this overclock's bad for reasons similar to Toon Cooler. Its benefits simply don't affect the flamethrower's strongest aspects. Namely, it makes the gun significantly worse at utilizing both sticky flames and heat radiance. Both of them aren't affected by flow rate or damage per particle, meaning face melter is nothing but downside. In fact, flow rate is actively bad for both. The faster rate of fire means you spend more ammo doing the same thing. Heat Radiance isn't quite as important for the flamethrower as Cold Radiance is for the Cryo Cannon, but Sticky Flame certainly is, and it also ends up spending more fuel with no benefit from Face Melter. In fact, Sticky Flame's output isn't affected by anything not explicitly Sticky Flame's related, outside of Flame Reach and, strangely enough, frames per second. Because of this, Face Melter does literally nothing except completely give your mag size, flame ridge, and ammo efficiency if you use the strongest tools the flamethrower provides. Being forced into a direct flame playstyle is very bad. It's ridiculously ammo inefficient, takes enormous amounts of attention, and isn't even good against the tankier enemies, since they usually have fire resistance. The only reason to use direct damage and by extension a Face Melter is against Makara, but even then you have much better options, and bots, where Face Melter does genuinely have a niche as an overheater. One last one for Driller, I promise, then we'll be done. Goob Armor Special is a fun gimmick, but it's practically worse in most situations. The extra fragments, pedal duration, and guaranteed connected pedals is nice, but it comes at a cost. The Goob Armor Special's awkward pedal placement pattern and their gradual release. The straight lines look nice, but in practice, they're awkwardly positioned since you'd typically want a wider line rather than a parallel one. That can be played around, however. What can't be played around is the fact that the Sludge Pub no longer releases all its fragments upon impact. Instead, they lethargically drop out of your charge shot, which hemorrhages its damage along the way. This makes it completely impractical to utilize the charge shot damage and the fragments at a close range, and can completely kill the overclock's usage in caves with ceilings that are too low. You exchange a lot of flexibility and Sludge's main strength compared to Flamethrower, burst and single target damage, for ever so slightly better crowd control under absolutely ideal circumstances. Amusing, but really just not worth using. Return to Sender is a weird one. It sacrifices a third of your ammo pool for dubious benefit at best. The relevant target pool of enemies I'd like to shoot more than once at with Breach Cutter is really just limited to larger enemies, like Spitballers, Praetorians, and Pressers. However, 
Even against those enemies, you often don't want to be using the Overclock's effect at all, as one of the virtues of Breach Cutter is its ability to handle mix worms, and it can only really do that if it moves forwards. If the position of your desired single target is just a little too far into the swarm, utilizing the effect of the Overclock takes far too much time and attention while barely being more ammo efficient than just unequipping the Overclock and shooting twice. The only time this overclock even has a faint chance in hell of actually outperforming base breach is in Praetorian Swarms, where it probably does actually give the 33% extra ammo efficiency it professes, but even there, taking advantage of the effect can put your health bar into jeopardy. Just not worth the effort. I'll also add that High Voltage Crossover is a similar case, and also probably not better than base breach. Substantially less ammo for a bit more damage is just not a great trade-off for the breach cutter generally. Alright, time to ruffle some feathers. We'll start with the overclock that might be the most popular, but this is also the least controversial take. Fat Boy. Fat Boy is THE overclock to get as a new player. You hear whispers about the nuke the moment you start getting the overclocks. It's also understandable, this overclock is incredibly flashy and undeniably iconic. That being said, it also sucks. Typically, I'm the type of player that prioritizes damage over all else. If it's a reasonable and effective option, I will almost always take a damage mod over an ammo mod. Fat Boy is excessively damage heavy, even for me. You get 3 relatively high impact shots per resupply, and then you're done. No secondary weapon until the next resupply. That's it. You get to kill 3 medium sized grub packs, and then it's lights out. The radiation field itself is a double edged sword. It limits the team mobility, but it also does decent damage to grant variants. The possible friendly fire damage also makes it impossible to use safely in many situations. I don't think Fat Boy is truly awful, but it's so ammo hungry that it ends up being an extremely inflexible weapon that nearly entirely limits you to your primaries on the class that struggles with the survivability the most. Yes, I know how to use a weapon. Here's my solo with it. I do understand that it's a fun overclock. There's a reason why it's so often recommended. It's just not good. I've heard this awful overclock described as a scout's best DPS. People claim it melts grunts. Even putting aside the fact that grunts are a scout's least important enemy, it must be said first. All these claims might be true if Overtune Particle Accelerator could actually hit the enemies. It's genuinely impressive how bad OPA's accuracy is. The damage boost is no joke to be clear. It nearly doubles Drax damage per shot at the cost of about half your heat efficiency and your entire ability to hit the enemy. The additional 400% horizontal spread that completely shafts your ability to hit anything outside of melee range, and the heat downside means that your sustained DPS ends up being a bit better than no overclock at all. Or it would be if you could hit the goddamn enemies. In practice, Overtune Particle Accelerator sacrifices almost your entire range combat capability for better bursts if you're in literal hugging distance. The heat inefficiency makes it even worse for killing hordes, since it's significantly harder to proc the very powerful electricity mod. You might think this would be decent as a tank killer, right? Completely wrong. Drac is and will always be abysmal at killing Praetorians, and Overtune Particle Accelerator is no different, especially because you have to be within kissing distance to not have all your bullets get eaten by armor. And that's not even talking about how the overclock totally gutters your gun's ability to kill the enemy pool that's actually relevant to scout. High value targets. Overtune Particle Accelerator expects the Drac into its problems rather than mitigating them, and as a result, is, in my opinion, worse than nothing at all. And yes, I have a solo with this one too. Here's the big sell. The thumbnail. Possibly the single most overrated overclock in the game. Hipster is worse than nothing at all. Hear me out. I know I said in the beginning that I'd leave out overclocks that shift the weapon into a new use case, even if that use case was weaker. Hipster maybe doesn't belong on this list, but I just had to get it out there. Hipster is worse than nothing at all. The reason why is a complex topic. It's deeply intertwined with the attention economy of difficult difficulties and Scout's identity as a class. But before we get to that, let's get one thing out of the way. Hipster is not better than any typical blowthrough ammo M1000 build against grunts in both time to kill and ammo efficiency, unless you take tier 1 ammo, which is completely incomprehensible. The typical 2-3-2-2-1 weak wine hipster build is, at the bare minimum, significantly worse than any other 1-3-X-1-X M1000 build at killing grunts. Even if you hit only weak points, you're about even compared to hitting two grunts at a time with blowthrough on base M1000, which is not a tall task. 
In practice, needing to aim significantly more is both slower and takes more attention. And if you spend on average 1.5 shots to kill each grunt, your hipster is less ammo, attention, and time efficient than literally nothing at all. With tier 4 blowthrough, hipster has approximately the same number as it, no overblock in terms of ammo efficiency and raw time, but is slightly worse overall, especially with clip size accounted for. Alright, now we can move on to the part where hipster really suffers. Scout's primary target pool, high value targets. Aside from web spitters and the relatively recent addition of stingtails, Hipster is significantly worse than typical Focus M1000 builds with no overclock. Purely numbers-wise, this isn't super clear, as Hipster does seem to have lower times to kill than no overclock, but in practice, Focus shots have several large advantages. The first and most obvious is that they have perfect accuracy. Without the recoil mod, you'll often miss subsequent range shots while spamming with Hipster, which hurts its performance. Secondly, Focus shots let you quote-unquote bank damage while you're charging. You can charge while you're aiming, instantly killing the target when you land on it if your shot is charged. This is extremely valuable for target switching between all your one-shot kills, which overclockless M1000 can be built to accomplish against almost every relevant target. Hipster kills those incredible breakpoints, requiring you to spend significantly more time and attention killing each target, compared to just charging and releasing once. Another is that the base weapon can comfortably take ad advantage of the extreme. Another is that the base weapon can comfortably take advantage of the extremely powerful tier 5 focus shot mods. With Hipster, you lose a lot of damage charging one focus shot, over half your clip's worth. This is much less the case with oc builds, and you can actually reasonably proc tier 5b fear without an overclock. Okay, so Hipster is worse against both grunts and most high value targets. What is it good for, then? As much as I'd love to say nothing, it has two main benefits single target damage, and ammo economy against enemies that are grunts. Hipster is genuinely quite good single target damage, which can be quite nice for stingtails and menaces in particular, and you have effectively quite a bit more total damage to play with if you're not shooting grunts. However, these two benefits aren't that important for scout. Aside from stingtail and menaces, a scout's attention is often not very well used, unloading all of their bullets into Praetorians and oppressors. Instead, their attention is better spent sniping down high value targets, a playstyle distinction that makes a hipster's ammo boon much less useful than it would seem. Rarely, if ever, do you actually run out of ammo if you stick to shooting targets that you should, as scout. Hipster can feel comfortable to use compared to the breakpoint heavy tier 1 damage M1000 builds, but that comfort is only that. Comfort. Against enemies that are most threatening to your team and especially you, as a scout, who can just grapple away from all ground enemies, Hipster is just not very good. Sorry Axis, not sorry. We'll end on a less intense and controversial note, but perhaps a divisive one nonetheless. Vodkin suffers from a pretty similar conundrum. More or less the only thing this overclock does is completely destroy the weapon's ability to kill anything but basic grunts and whip spitters. This overclock is a fun one, but destroying the nice one-shot breakpoints on Slashers, Tridraws, Mectera, Acid Spitters, and Guards that the Bulchark normally hits with tier 2 damage in exchange for getting to kill two more grunts per shot, sometimes, but only if your bolts don't veer off course into the lemming grass for the Slasher or Guard, is just not worth it. Getting to productively use it for Web Spitters is also very rare, since you don't often see Web Spitters close enough to both you and each other. All in all, Bodkin takes the bolt jerk from a flexible high value target killer into a weapon that's sometimes okay against grunts, which is a trade off that's just not worth taking. Still really fun though. And that's it. As always, please do not let my opinion, however right it might be, stop you from playing with what you find fun. These options might be some of the weakest in the game, but if you play with them and they feel right for you, more power to you. Thanks for watching. Happy mining out there. Rock and stone.